Good morning. My name is Michael Barber, and I'm president of Branch 25 San Francisco of the Royal Canadian Legion. Before we begin today's service, I want to acknowledge that the land throughout the San Francisco Bay Area is the unceded territory of the Ohlone, Miwok, Kishaya, Patwan, and Wapo peoples. Following the gold rush of 1849 and California becoming a state in 1850, the United States government began the process to establish formal relations with their tribal communities. The unstated intent, however, was to extinguish indigenous title to the land and forcibly move people to areas that were not desired by whites. Throughout 1851 and 1852, three commissioners negotiated with tribes up and down the state, creating the alphabet treaties, Treaty A through Treaty R. However, the United States would fail to ratify these treaties. It is important to understand that both the existence of these treaties and their contents were held in secret until 1905, which meant that for over 50 years, the indigenous tribes of California had no right to exist. Additionally, while the US government were negotiating these treaties, the newly formed state of California were passing laws to authorize and pay for the extermination of indigenous people or to provide for their enslavement. Today, as we remember those who bravely answered their country's call to service, we should also remember and acknowledge the people indigenous to this land, their culture, their language, and their freedom, all of which was stolen from them. Now to today's service. Welcome to our fifth annual Commemoration Day virtual service. The service began as a way to re-engage in the Canadian community in the Bay Area during the early months of the pandemic, following the cancellation of many of our regular in-person remembrance activities. However, as a U.S. branch of the Royal Canadian Legion, we don't have a physical location, and because there are so few branches down here, many of our members are located outside of the Bay Area. In fact, we have members throughout California, as well as many who live in several other states in the Western U.S., as well as in Canada and Mexico. In an effort to engage all of our members with the opportunity to both attend and participate in our activities, we've continued this virtual service. Now, for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, the 1st of July is not just a time to celebrate Canada Day, but also a day when we remember the tragic events of the 1st of July, 1916, and the Battle of Beaumont Hamel. Originally designated as Commemoration Day, most Newfoundlanders would refer today as Memorial Day. As not to confuse it with the American holiday, and because we are an American branch, today we will use the statutory name of Commemoration Day in today's virtual service. Like our previous virtual services, we have reached out to a variety of Newfoundlanders, Labradorians, and Canadians from coast to coast to coast to provide an informative program of remembrance that showcases the talent of our province and country. We begin today's service with the singing of the Ode to Newfoundland. Those of us of a certain age remember when TV stations would sign off at the end of the evening and their programming would cease, only to begin again the next morning. This particular version of the Ode is a recording from the station sign-off that was used by Cable 9 or Cable Atlantic St. John's from around 1994. When sun rays cry, pine clad hills and summer spreads the hounds. When silver voices choose thy hills, we love thee smiling land. We love Thank you. 
For those of you who may be attending your first Branch 25 service, the San Francisco branch of the Royal Canadian Legion was first founded during the summer of 1931. Over the years, it was one of dozens of Canadian Legion branches throughout Northern California, and for that matter, the wider United States. Over time, as members have moved on or passed away, branches began to disappear. Eventually, the San Francisco branch was the only branch left in Northern California. It's one of four branches in California and one of 12 branches in the United States, as well, one of 16 branches outside of Canada. Like many Canadian branches of the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 25 San Francisco hosts an annual Remembrance Day service, sponsors a local cadet corps, maintains the grave of Commonwealth veterans in the Bay Area, among other things. For our first speaker today, in today's service, I would like to call upon Comrade Bruce Julian, Dominion President of the Royal Canadian Legion, for some remarks. Hello, my name is Bruce Julian and I'm the Dominion President of the Royal Canadian Legion. I'm honoured to share a few thoughts on behalf of our Legion family as we mark Memorial Day. It may officially be called Memorial Day in Newfoundland and Labrador, but in truth, it is Memorial Day across our great country. Without the hundreds of soldiers who served with the 1st Newfoundland Regiment during the First World War, our lives might be very different today. Newfoundland lost close to 700 men during the war, many of them during the horrific events at beaumont Hamel, during the Battle of the Somme in France. We salute their bravery, their sacrifice, and their role in securing freedom for us and for others then and now. In May, our Newfoundland command helped repatriate an unknown Newfoundland soldier from France back to Canada. He died at Bonhomme Hamel in 1916. He lived in a different time when Newfoundland was, was not yet part of our country and made the ultimate sacrifice. He had a name, he had a family, he had a life. Now he will rest forever back home in Newfoundland and Labrador. Generations of relatives and supporters will have a place to gather to remember him and all those from that great province who gave their lives at Beaumont Amel and in other conflicts. And they will do so as they stand in the newly refurbished Newfoundland National War Memorial in St. John's. Without those from that province who have served during the Second World War and in conflict since then, our lives might also be very different today. Each year, July 1st is a day we celebrate all that is Canadian. These celebrations are possible only because July 1st is also commemorating Memorial Day. The brave people of Newfoundland and Labrador will always be with us in spirit because of them and those who continue to give all they have, we remain free. For this, we will, we must always remember them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Comrade Julian. Memorial University College was founded in 1925. It was established as a tribute to the Newfoundlanders who had served or died during the First World War, hence the name Memorial. Still today, there are reminders of the university's commemorative past throughout its campuses, from the Memorial Tower and Veterans Memorial Court on the main St. John's campus, to the Danger Tree sculpture on the Grenfell campus in Corner Brook. Each day, the staff in both St. John's and Corner Brook turn a page in the replica copies of the Newfoundland Book of Remembrance, the same book as displayed in the memorial chambers of the Parliament buildings, which contains the names of every Newfoundlander who died serving their country prior to Confederation. The University has truly lived up to the words inscribed on its memorial wall that in freedom of learning, their sacrifice might not be forgotten. Next, I'd ask Dr. Neil Bose, President of Memorial University, to say a few words. In late May, around 100 people left Newfoundland and Labrador and travelled to France, 
They were there to repatriate the remains of an unknown soldier, a young man from the Royal Newfoundland Regiment who died at Bowman Hamel and whose grave simply read, Known unto God. Today, July 1st, his remains are being interred at the National War Memorial in St John's. Among the group who travelled to France was our Chancellor, Earl Ludlow. The province has the National War Memorial as a focus of remembrance, but the people also have a living memorial, our university, and we were honoured to be among the group who brought one of ours home. Newfoundland and Labrador came together to fight a war and remained united for a common cause, to see future generations thrive together, and thrive we have. Next year we celebrate our 100th anniversary, 100 years of making an impact at home and throughout the world, but in all ways we continue to preserve the memory of the fallen and our special origin. Thank you, Dr. Bose. At this time, I'd like to introduce our musical guest. Terry Penny is a singer and songwriter originally from Newfoundland. Over the past three decades, Terry has been known for his heartfelt and moving songs commemorating Newfoundland and Canadian veterans. In addition to his music endeavors, Terry has also authored a book and associated CD entitled The Unforgotten, Stories of Newfoundland Veterans. Today, Terry is sharing with us a piece called Normandy in Newfoundland, and I'll let him tell you a little bit more about the story behind that song. Hi, everybody. My name is Terry Penny, and I'm a singer-songwriter from Newfoundland, Canada. And I uh, want to say what an honor it is to be a part of your special event today. And uh, I was told uh, that... Uh, it might be an idea to give you guys an idea or a background of where the song Normandy and Newfoundland came from, which you're about to uh, about to hear. Um, about 25 years ago, I was uh, at a grocery store really early in the morning, and uh, I noticed at the front of the store there were four huge windows, and there was a gentleman standing in front of these windows kind of looking out uh, by himself. and looked like he was in a bit of a daze, and he was, he was there about 10 minutes, and... Uh, Finally, I decided I needed to go over and see if he was okay. And so I walked up and I said, Sir, are you, how are you doing this morning? He looked at me and said, I was just in France. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I thought he might have just got back from a vacation. And I said, uh, you just had a, just on a trip, were you? He said, no, it was snowing at the time. These huge flakes were coming down. And uh, he was looking at it and he said, every time it snows like this with the real big flakes, it puts me right back to being overseas during the war. And... In the middle of that deserted grocery store, to a complete stranger, because I didn't know him at all, he unloaded all these stories that he, you know, lived overseas during World War II. Um, some of them were, were funny, some of them were sad, and some sent chills down my spine. And, uh, and I remember before we parted ways that morning, uh, the last thing I said to him was... Uh, it must have been really, really uh, scary being over there, such a young man, and, you know, seeing the things you, you saw. And uh, I remember he looked at me and said, I was scared every minute that I was over there. And it took me about a year or so, but or maybe even two, before I got around to writing this song based on the, the conversations that we had that, that morning. And I, I remember consulting him before I wrote the song, or as I was writing the song, and we kind of struck up a friendship, and when the song was done, he really liked it and really thought that it it spoke to the things that he experienced overseas, and uh, I think that kind of bonded us, you know. And uh, so I would go visit him and his wife on a regular basis, and uh, go in for cookie and tea, cookies and tea, and uh, and a nice chat. And sometimes uh, his conversations would we we. We talk about his wartime experiences, and other times we just talk about what was happening, you know, during the days and just regular conversation. But uh, I remember uh, one day I went down there, and uh, we weren't talking about the war at all. But somewhere out of the blue, he just said, "You know what my biggest fear is now? 
and he was 83 years old at the time. And uh, I said, what? He said, I'm afraid that I'm going to get Alzheimer's and have to go back to the war. And he said, Terry, I hope the good Lord takes me first before I ever got to go back there. And uh, that really that really hit me like a ton of bricks. And uh, I remember, uh, you know, that's why I'm really careful to remember, not just the guys that didn't come home, but the guys that did, because some of those guys, um, like him, you know, lived that stuff for another 60 or 70 years, you know, after they returned. And uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of where that song came from. The song is called Normandy and Newfoundland. And uh, I just want to say what an honor it is to be a part of this today. And God bless everybody. And I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you very much. He's staring out the window Moon is shining down Ghostly like the color of his hair He doesn't see me Doesn't look around It's like he isn't even there I couldn't help but wonder what's been trouble in the man And so I ask his darling wife And she said, well he's still haunted by the fight And it's Normandy in Newfoundland tonight His memories dragged him back To a time when he was young 1944, June the 21st Fighting in France Hiding from the Huns In some ruined Catholic church Just beyond the walls of God was hell and blood and hate And as the moon lit up the foreign sky He heard himself say to a comrade I wish Normandy was Newfoundland tonight he said, Overseas, friend, I've been there a thousand times Fishing fearless, tiny boat adrift But this overseas, a different kind of thing I'm frightened every moment That I See his face reflected by the light And sixty years Haven't killed what's in his eyes It's Normandy in Newfoundland tonight Normandy in Newfoundland tonight Thank you, Mr. Penny. 
This year marks the 100th anniversary of the National War Memorial in St. John's. Interestingly, as the Dominion of Newfoundland was not a part of Canada during the First World War, or the Second World War for that matter, it was an independent nation. As such, the War Memorial in St. John's is one of only two national war memorials in Canada, the other one being in Ottawa. As a part of the ceremonies surrounding the 100th anniversary of the monument, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador, along with the Royal Canadian Leech, have endeavored to create a tomb of the unknown soldier at the St. John's National War Memorial. On May 25th of this year, an unknown soldier, a member of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment during the First World War, was repatriated by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission from Beaumont Hamel, where he fell and was transferred to the Canadian government. After lying in state at the Confederation building for the last three days, earlier today, that soldier was reinterned in a tomb of the unknown soldier at the National War Memorial in St. John's, representing Newfoundlanders and Labradorians from all branches of service who have no known grave. Next, I'd like to invite David Loveridge, the Director of Canada, the Americas, and the Pacific Area for the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, to bring some remarks about the Commission and the role they played in today's events. Good morning, my name's David Loveridge and I'd like to say hello to you all in San Francisco at the Royal Canadian Legion branch there. Um, I'm the area director for the Canada, Americas and Pacific area of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. I'm speaking to you today from uh, the Beechwood Cemetery, our national military cemetery here in Ottawa, Canada. Um, and it's a real pleasure to be able to join you today, even if it's only for a few minutes. Um, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, for those that don't know, is an organization that works for the King in England. Uh, we have six member countries, which is Canada, United Kingdom, India, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand, and we take care of Commonwealth war graves around the world. We're in 100, over 150 countries, 23,000 sites, um, and we take care of 1.7 million war graves from the First World War and the Second World War. I tell people all the time, greatest job that nobody knows about. Um, I really enjoy my job. Here in, uh, in my job, I'm responsible for Canada, the Americas and the Pacific area. So everything from Northern Canada right down to the Falkland Islands in South America, and as well as the Pacific Rim, everything from Eastern Russia all the way around to Myanmar. So myself and my staff, we travel a lot, uh, but again, a great job. So I understand today that you're celebrating or, or taking a look at Newfoundland and, and celebrating hopefully the return of uh, a Newfoundland soldier from Europe, uh, the new unknown soldier. Many of you may know Canada already has an unknown soldier here in Ottawa. He was returned from France in the year 2000 and buried at our National War Mem uh, Memorial downtown Ottawa and has become a centerpiece for our remembrance ceremonies in November. If you know a little bit about Canadian history, Newfoundland was the dominion of Newfoundland until the 31st of March 1949. And so during the First World War and the Second World War, um, Newfoundland uh, fought uh, both those wars as a dominion or as an uh, independent country. And so about a year and a half ago, the Royal Canadian Legion in Newfoundland approached me and approached the commission and asked if it was possible for them to get an unknown soldier. So over the last 18 months to two years, we've worked with Veterans Affairs Canada, the Royal Newfoundland uh, Regiment, uh, the Royal Canadian Legion in Newfoundland, and obviously the government in Newfoundland to bring an unknown soldier back. About two weeks ago, um, the soldier, uh, unknown soldier was exhumed in France uh, was handed over to the French government and then handed over uh, to the Canadian, or well, to the Newfoundland government, but the Canadian government, and brought back to Newfoundland. Next week, uh, I have the distinct honor of going to Newfoundland. Um, I'll be part of the ceremony there as a guest of the government of Newfoundland, along with the vice chairman of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, um, and we'll be taking part in what I think is going to be one of the most memorable ceremonies in my career. So I'm hoping that's today for you, July 1st. By the time uh, you guys have this celebration, it probably already will be completed. 
Um, I hope you get to see a video of it or get to see some of the news releases, but what a great event. So a real pleasure to speak to you. I uh, hope you have a great Canadian event on Canada Day. So happy Canada Day to you all. And thanks very much for a few minutes of your time today. Take care. Thank you, Director Loveridge. There are actually three Commonwealth War Graves Commission cemeteries located at Beaumont Hamel. The Hawthorne Ridge Cemetery No. 2, Hunter's Cemetery, and Wye Ravine Cemetery. At the entrance to the Beaumont Hamel Newfoundland Memorial Park, there's a bronze plaque that reads, Tread softly here, go reverently and slow. Ye let your souls go down upon its knees, and with bowed head and heart abased, strive hard to grasp the future gain in this sore loss. For not one foot of this dank sod but drank its surfeit of the blood of gallant men, who for their faith, their hope, for life and liberty, here made the sacrifice, here gave their lives and gave right willingly for you and for me. The Beaumont Hamel Newfoundland Memorial Park became a National Historic Site in 1997. It is one of only two National Historic Sites located outside of Canada, the other one being the Canadian National Vimy Memorial. I mention this memorial because the hard-fought victory during the Battle of Vimy Ridge is often referred to as the birth of a nation, a defining moment when Canada emerged from under the shadow of Britain, and as a country, there was an awakened sense of Canadian nationalism. Today, as it is both Memorial Day in Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as Canada Day for all Canadians, it is only fitting that our final speaker in today's service is the Honourable Jeanette Petitpas Taylor, the Minister of Veterans Affairs, to say a few words on behalf of the Government of Canada. Hello friends from the Royal Canadian Legion, US Zone, Branch Number 25. Jeanette here, Canada's Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defence. Le 1er juillet, les Terre-Neuviens et les Labradoriens célèbrent la fête du Canada et le jour du souvenir. Il y a 108 ans aujourd'hui, le Newfoundland Regiment est entré en action dans le cadre de la Grande Offensive, l'offensive majeure des forces alliées pendant la Première Guerre mondiale, connue sous le nom de la Bataille de la Somme. On that clear morning in a small French commune of Beaumont Hamel, the regiment's commander ordered his soldiers to advance over a low ridge. What the soldiers did know was that their week-long artillery barrage against the German position prior to July 1st had been ineffective, and that bright morning sun put them in the perfect line of sight of German machine gunners. They stood no chance of advancing under enemy fire as thick as hail. The next day, only 68 of the 800 Newfoundlanders who had gone into battle answered the roll call. The losses suffered by the Newfoundland Regiment at Beaumont Hamel were enormous, deeply shaking their home communities. With so many of its young men dead or wounded, Newfoundland and Labrador would be forever, forever changed. Aujourd'hui, le reste de l'un de ces hommes tombé au combat, un soldat inconnu rapatrié du nord de la France armé repose dans une tombe nouvellement créée au Monument Commémoratif National de Guerre de Terre-Neuve à St. John's. As Canadians across the country and all over the world celebrate Canada Day, we join Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to commemorate this unknown Newfoundland soldier and the hundreds of others who gave their lives at Beaumont Hamel. Lest we forget. N'oublions jamais. Thank you, Minister Petitpa Taylor. Throughout today's service, you may have noticed each sequence has been broken up with a flower. While the poppy is the international symbol of remembrance and the official symbol of the Royal Canadian Legion, for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, we often think of the forget-me-not as our symbol of remembrance. The forget-me-not first gained popularity in the 1920s when the Great War Veterans Association of Newfoundland adopted the flower for its annual Commemoration Day fundraiser. In recognition of this special connection, 
in 2016 to mark the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill, the Royal Canadian Legion gave Legionnaires in Newfoundland and Labrador special permission to wear the forget-me-nots on their uniform. As a part of the service, we have used the forget-me-not to provide a silent reminder of the sacrifices made by Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, and indeed all Canadians. We close today's service with a rendition of O Canada that was part of the station sign-off that was used by Cable 9 or Cable Atlantic St. John's from around 1994. This brings us to the end of today's service. It is a touch ironic that today's anthems were part of a local broadcaster's station sign-off, as today will be the final Commemoration Day virtual service that Branch 25 will be hosting. As I mentioned at the beginning, the service began during a time when we couldn't get together, and it continued as a way to allow our members who are physically distant from the San Francisco Bay Area to participate in the branch. As you may have noticed, there's been an absence of participation from our membership and our Sea Cadet Corps from this service. Given the main reasons for this service no longer seem to apply, as a branch with small numbers, we have decided that after five years, this was our final virtual service. We will continue to stream and record our in-person services on Remembrance Day from Liberty Cemetery in Petaluma and on Memorial Day from Greenlawn Memorial Park in Colma, so that everyone has the ability to join us regardless of location. So, I want to thank you all for attending. For those who are in attendance who may be unfamiliar with the background of Beaumont Hamel, we end each of our Commemoration Day virtual services with a five-minute video from the Legion Magazine's Military Moments series. This particular one was narrated by the late Newfoundlander Gordon Pinson, and it was produced as part of the 100th anniversary of various Canadian milestones of World War I. Before that moment begins, I'd once again like to thank all of those who contributed to today's service. While I've been providing individual thanks following each portion of the video, I'd be remiss if I did not once again extend thanks to a variety of individuals who helped make this virtual service possible, including the Honorable Jeanette Petitpas Taylor, Mr. David Loveridge, Comrade Bruce Julian, Dr. Neil Bose, and Mr. Terry Penny, as well as their teams who made their contributions possible. I'd also like to mention my comrades in Branch 25 of the Royal Canadian Legion. While you've seen and heard from a number of folks throughout today's service, this represents only a small number of people behind the scenes who helped make these contributions happen, and we sincerely thank them for all of their efforts. Finally, thank you for joining us today either on the live stream or watching this recording on YouTube. I hope that you have an enjoyable remainder of your day and I wish to everyone a happy Canada Day.
Take me back to dear old Blighty. Put me on the train for London town. Take me over there. Drop me anywhere. Birmingham, Leeds, or Manchester. Well, I don't care. I should love to see my best girl. Puzzling up the game we soon should be. Italy, Italy, I see. Hurry me home to Blighty. Blighty is the place for me. July 1st, 1916, marked the first day of the Battle of the Somme, an offensive against Germany by British and French forces on both sides of France's Somme River during the First World War. The village of Beaumont Hamel was just behind German lines. The offensive there started at 6 a.m. with an hour-long artillery bombardment of German positions. At 7.20, 10 minutes before zero hour, 18,000 kilograms of explosives were detonated in a tunnel dug under the Hawthorne Ridge Redoubt, an important German stronghold west of the village. The explosion alerted the Germans to the attack and gave them time to man their defenses and arm their weapons. The Newfoundland Regiment and the rest of the 88th Brigade waited back in St. John's Road, a reserve trench with dugouts that protected them against German shells. The Newfoundlanders' mission was to go forward, but they walked into a complete disaster. At 8.45, the Newfoundland Regiment was ordered to move on the enemy, but the trenches were choked with dead and wounded from two earlier waves of attack. So the Newfoundlanders didn't use the trenches. They got up on top and simply walked over open ground. Some 780 men swarmed over the battlefield, weaving their way through the zigzag gaps in the British wire before reaching no man's land. They were the only ones moving on the battlefield, and they were silhouetted on the horizon. Every German gun in the area was trained on them. Machine guns cut through the Newfoundlanders like cordwood. Many fell before reaching their own front line. A few made it to a clump of shell-blasted trees where the Danger Tree Memorial stands today. But most were struck by guns trained on the gaps in the wire. The Newfoundland Regiment was decimated in a matter of minutes. Royal Newfoundland Regiment has a storied past, but of all the stories, none is as captivating or tragic as its advance during the Battle of the Somme on July the 1st, 1916. One hundred years later, the event still resonates deeply with Newfoundlanders. Every July the 1st, while the rest of Canada celebrates the birth of a nation, Newfoundlanders mourn their losses in the Great War, and especially those at Beaumont Hamel. 